Hello, pet villagers. This is Scott, the administrator here at Seven Hills Animal Hospital, part of the pet village of Seven Hills. Now, when your vet's telling you all this stuff about how Sparky needs his shots, how they need to draw some blood for testing, how you need to prevent fleas and ticks, how you're going to have to go pick up some poop, put it in a bag, take it in your car. You're probably thinking, are you out of your mind? Actually, if you're like me, first you're thinking, holy mackerel, how much is this going to cost? Followed closely by, I got to pick up some milk. I wonder if they'll allow Sparky in the grocery store. But believe it or not, your vet's not just doing this for Sparky, he's doing it for you too. And not just even for you, but for your friends and your family and the human race in general. Think about it this way. If you live north of the Carolinas, there's a good chance you know someone with Lyme disease. And if you don't now, in all likelihood, before long you will. In Virginia, we're seeing about a thousand new cases of Lyme disease every year. In humans, Lyme is transmitted by ticks and is what we call a zoonotic disease or a zoonosis. A zoonotic disease is one that can spread from animals to humans, and Lyme is not the only one. Raise your hand if you've heard of rabies. Nobody? One bite from an infected animal and you've got it. Trust me when I say you don't want it. How about hookworms? Now, these little boogers are pooped out by animals and just hang out on the ground waiting for you to walk by. They'll latch on any unprotected skin and then burrow in. Whoa. Now you've got to eat roundworm eggs to be infected by these little nasties and I really don't imagine you're going to be cracking one open for breakfast anytime soon. And they know that. So they've evolved eggs that are sticky. If you touch one of these eggs in the soil, it'll stick to your hands. And these things are microscopic, so you'll never know. Mm. Need I say more? Now, roundworms won't necessarily hurt an adult, but our kids are a different story. They can cause infection in the brain and in the eye and have been known to cause blindness in children. So the next time your vet's encouraging you to run these routine tests or to keep your pet on flea and tick prevention, don't just think about Sparky. Think about your family and friends as well, because Sparky's not the only one we want to live a long, healthy, and happy life. Thanks for watching, and if you want to keep learning more about pets, vets, and what we think your pet would say if she could talk, please subscribe or check us out on Facebook. So my pronunciation of the word zoonosis has brought up some questions. I wanted to let you know I did look this up before making that video. Now before I get going, I want you to pronounce something for me. All right, now remember how you pronounce that. Now the words zoonosis and zoonotic have the same origin as some other words you may know, such as and zodiac and zoo. Now the root of these words either comes from this Greek word or that Greek word, depending on where you look. Now I don't speak Greek, but I'm gonna guess that this is pronounced zo and this is pronounced zoion. So when you're pronouncing a word that starts with this root, it seems logical to me you would start with zo. Now zoonotic seems like a logical pronunciation, but zoonosis is just not intuitive for me. I did look in several dictionaries though, and zoonosis appears to be the preferred pronunciation. However, in one dictionary, I did find a secondary pronunciation, zoonosis, which to me would really be the instinctive way to say it. So there you have it, zoonosis. Eh, we never really use that around here anyway. We usually say zoonotic. Now back to this word. How did you say it? It seems like people are split about 50-50 on the pronunciation of this word. Let's break it down into parts and make it a little bit easier for you. Ology refers to any science or branch of knowledge. Biology, geology, psychology, mythology. So in the same vein, it makes sense to pronounce the separate parts of this word separately. Zo and ology, making zoology. If you ask a zoologist what he or she studies, you're gonna get this answer 99% of the time. That being said, the English language is always evolving and I'm sure we'll see zoology in dictionaries before long if it's not already there. This brings us to the word zoo, which is really just a shortened form of zoological park or garden. I guess we could call it a zoa, but that pretty much sounds ridiculous. 